to our fundraising dinner. Uh, it's our second fundraising dinner, the first one since we've had the facility, so Jazakallah Khair for attending. Uh, we have a um, entertaining program here for you. Uh, my name is Zahid Merchant. I'm, uh, I'm a volunteer at ICCM and I'm going to be the Master of Ceremonies for the evening, uh, inshallah. We've had this center now for three months. Uh, a lot has happened since we've uh, acquired this facility. We've had Gayam programs, we've had a carnival, we've had many other festivities. Uh, and inshallah, there's a lot more potential for this place, which is why we thank you for coming here uh, to contribute to this place, be a part of the center, and help us achieve uh, what we have in plan. Uh, a couple of housekeeping things that I want to make sure uh, we take care of. For those who haven't been to this facility before, uh, the washrooms for the men is out here in the hall, uh, right by the entrance. Uh, for the sisters, uh, it's in the hallway as soon as the, the first door on your right-hand side. Uh, there's a bathroom on the left-hand side. Uh, so you, the bathroom, the washrooms are there. Uh, for children, children between the age of 3 and 10, uh, we have a program set up for them. So we have a reptile show which they can uh, view. It's about uh, half an hour in length. Uh, we've got other festivities planned for them as well. So in, for your children between the age of three and 10, you go through the hallway on your left and your right hand side, you'll see two classrooms. Uh, you can leave them in there. There's volunteers in there that will take care of them uh, and just let them know where you're seated. So if they need to find you, they know exactly where to uh, come look for you. Um, finally, we expect a full house here today. So we ask you kindly, if you can fill up the rows in the front uh, and don't leave any gaps between you and somebody else because as people come in later, uh, it's going to be hard for them to find place between uh, two brothers that are sitting there or maybe two sisters that are sitting there. Uh, so we ask you to come move forward if you can. Uh, don't leave gaps between yourselves and somebody else. Uh, inshallah, it will accommodate everybody else coming forward. Um, as I mentioned, we have an entertaining uh, schedule planned for you tonight. Uh, we're going to begin the evening with the recitation of the Holy Quran. Uh, I'm going to ask uh, Imam Sheikh Uthman to come up. Uh, before he comes up, I'm going to give a brief introduction on him. Uh, mashallah, he's been the Imam of this masjid now for almost about a month. Uh, he comes with a lot of distinctions. He has completed the Ilmiya degree from Madrasa Talim al Islam in the UK. Uh, he completed his Hivs at the age of 13. Uh, he's led Tarawi across Masajid in the United States and Canada. We're privileged to have him here as our Imam. He gets called all over North America and he's our Imam here in Milton, mashallah. Um, he holds a uh, couple of distinctions in Qiraat and Tajweed. Uh, he has in Ijaza in all 10 Qiraat and 20 Riwayat and he's going to give us a sample of those 10 Qiraat today. So I ask Sheikh Uthman to come up. Jazakallah khair. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والسابقون السابقون أولئك المقربون في جنات النعيم ثلة من الأولين وقليل من الآخرين على سرر موضونة متكئين عليها متقابلين يطوف عليهم ولدان مخلدون 
بأكواب وأباريق وكأس من معين لا يصدعون عنها ولا ينزفون وفاكهة مما يتخيرون ولحم طير مما ما يشتهون وحور عين كأمثال اللؤلؤ المكنون جزاء بما كانوا يعملون لا يسمعون فيها لغوا ولا تأثيما إلا قيلا سلاما سلاما وأصحاب اليمين ما أصحاب اليمين في سدر مخضود وطلح منضود وظل ممدود وماء مسكوب وفاكهة كثيرة لا مقطوعة ولا ممنوعة وفرش مرفوعة إنا أنشأناهن إنشاء فجعلناهن أبكارا عربا أترابا لأصحاب اليمين ثلة من الأولين وثلة من الآخرين صدق الله العظيم Jazakallah khair, Sheikh Uthman, for that amazing recitation. Uh, next, I'm going to call up the Emir of Ikna, Canada, Dr. Iqbal Nadwi. Uh, he needs no introduction as in terms of his qualifications. Everybody knows uh, he's one of the most renowned scholars in North America. Uh, but one thing I wanted to mention was uh, his dedication and his passion for this project. Uh, so there's many hurdles that uh, were encountered in getting this facility and getting the financing for this facility and getting the approvals and everything that goes along with that. But it was Dr. Iqbal Nadwi's passion and his dedication to this project, uh, which is why we're, here, we're all here today. Uh, so on behalf of everybody on the ICCM volunteer committee and everybody else, we wanted to make sure that we thank Dr. Iqbal Nadwi for his dedication to this project and helping us get this facility. Uh, without further ado, I'm going to pass it to Dr. Iqbal Nadwi to give us a few words of wisdom uh, the vision of the center and how he sees this becoming a foundation for the community in Milton. Jazakallah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah wa ba'd. Before I share with you our experience in this masjid, I want to share with you a story. I was reading a person's story. If you remember, a few years back in India, one masjid was demolished. And the masjid uh, was very famous for its uh, title, Babri Masjid. And it happened that uh, some groups of non-Muslim, they thought that they Muslim, they ruled India. And it is a humiliation for them. So as a token to remove this historical I can say stigma, they decided to demolish a mosque. And actually, this story started go back from 1947, and then uh, it was captured by some people, and then they demolished it. And it is 400 year old masjid. So the person who I'm uh, talking about it, okay.
So the person I'm talking about it, he said that I was very, very keen to participate in the demolition of masjid. And I went there, and I was the, among those very few who actually in the very start to demolish this masjid. But the part I'm talking about it, what happened, few lessons I can learn from it. One thing when he was describing to his father, he is also non-Muslim, he said, no, I am not happy with this thing what you did, and I don't allow you to stay at my home. And then when he died, father died, he said, don't, don't you know, as a Hindu culture, they burn the body, right? Carimate it. They said, don't do it, bury me. May I make some kind of, I can say, compensation of sin of my son. This is one side. But this person said, my, my friend who was with me, he got some kind of, just you can say, mental problem. And nobody can cure him. So some person advised him that he did a very big, you know, sin. And he must go to some Muslim to ask some kind of solution. So one sheikh, he said, yes, if you admit and you announce your Islam, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala remove this, uh, this curse from you. And really it happened. This young man become back to his normal life. So these two friends, and he also accepted when he informed that I am actually, I'm now accepting Islam and I want to do something. So the story which I want to share with you that these two young men, when they accepted Islam, they said, how we will compensate? How we can remove our sin? So they said, we swear, we make our commitment to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that each of us will do two jobs. One will capture or acquire 100 masajid which may be occupied by others. So we'll try to restore it, to get back to masjid. And other brother, he said, I will build 100 new masjid. And he said, Alhamdulillah, I, up to now, I completed 20 masajid. And that brother, he captured around 13 old masajid. And they said, it is our tradition now that at the anniversary of that demolition of Babri Masjid, we try to make one masjid at least to be acquired that time. So I'm just sharing with you this story to say how great opportunity they were given, even they were going to demolish masjid, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them hidayah and they become source of building house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alhamdulillah, we are not in that position, but it is our way to commit ourselves, right? If they are competing with us, and maybe they are ahead of us, making 100 masajid, can we say that, alhamdulillah, we did few contribution to beg at least one masjid? So I think this will give us a real, I can say, good face and good value in front of those who committed to do this thing. Uh, coming back to our, this project, really what happened that if I say you that from the very beginning in Milton, one brother, he was uh, in charge of Ikna Relief, Brother Fazlur Rahman, and he was coming in Milton to teach some kids. That time he asked me why we not advise community here to build a mosque or some prayer hall. So I can say you that I was maybe the first person or among those who carried this mission. And initially we started just making some kind of uh, gathering, some meetings, and then we started one place at the basement. And then some brother, they, one brother, he was a builder, so he gave a place in his uh, mall. Then we got this musalla. And our dream was that we will convert this musalla in a big masjid, but uh, there's, you know, always some issues of zoning and kind of these things. And that time we were not in position to get any big place. So Alhamdulillah, after a long struggle, 
we got this uh, place. And I myself, if I say, for example, contributed also to make it under Islamic finance because it is not easy to get $3 million in pocket. So we got some credit union banks, those who accepted our idea to lease to own. So in that sense, we can get leasing and it is diminishing with ownership and same time we are not involved in any kind of interest. So this, uh, this is a history and I'm just uh, feeling very proud that Alhamdulillah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with who listen our voices, our dua, and he made us, he used us as a tool. So I always say one thing that when we build a masjid, when we build a masjid, it is really we are connecting ourselves with the history of first masjid. If you remember that Allama Iqbal, he said, Mi'mari Haram. Sayyidina Ibrahim, والسلام, he is the first founder of Masjid al Haram. Right? He himself, with, his, with the help of his son. And he was building this house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he was, he did with a true intention, with a so sincerity, even he was not sure. He said, Oh Allah, Rabbana taqabbal minna inna kanta samiul alim. Oh Allah, we are really doing this thing for you, to please to you, for the sake of the good thing, but we need you to accept it. And it was accepted. So this is, we are, when we build a house, it become a part of that history. The second part of history is Masjid al-Rasul in Medina. When Rasulullah he moved to migrate to Medina, he did his first job to build a masjid. And he was also participating in construction of that masjid. It was very simple, but it was the center point of whole, you can say not Medina, but whole Islamic state of that time. So in that sense, when we build a house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we connect this portion of land to make it Baytullah, house of Allah. And this how Allah become what? وَأَنَّ الْمَسَاجِدَ لِلَّهِ Masajid belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala called it Baytun, Baytullah, house of Allah. It is a real dignity and prestige for this position, for this place. And I just share with you one other story. I was visiting Japan and the Islamic circle of Japan, they also started their journey with very few things, but they, what they did, Alhamdulillah, they built around four masjids. One masjid, they said what happened, it was just like maybe half of that space. And it was a big factory. And a Muslim brother, he was praying, he was worker there, and he was praying. So the owner of uh, that factory, he said, I dream that maybe you take this place for masjid. This Japanese brother, he said in this way. And subhanAllah, this thing happened, he was, I, I, I'm not saying, for example, it was happening that way, but he was bankrupt. And then he said, I offer you to just pay my bank loan and take this place. And it was $4 million. So they took this place and just imagine that how this person's word become a, true, a reality. And how one brother who was praying in that factory, he become a source to convert this whole space as a masjid. So just imagine one person's small contribution, how it make, how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept it. And make it, for example, just big reality of so on. And it is on the highway. So what they did, they, they put in hoarding, and they put la ilaha illallah. So if you are passing by, you can see that it is a masjid. So I'm saying, subhanAllah, yani how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala use some people for his house. Yani it is our use, right? It is an honor for us. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he's asking us to build his house. You know, if you ask someone here to build his house, nobody will go there. <laughs> Maybe some volunteer, they can go for a time, time. They say, oh, I want to make my own house. Why your house? But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asking us, and if you accept it, it's a real honor for us. So I'm saying that our connection with this house is actually connection with haram. And connection of haram means two things. 
Two things. First thing, that this house belongs to Allah only. So it is connecting us with Tawheed. Right? There is nothing else. We just make our sijda, one sijda for Allah. Allama Iqbal said, Wo ek sijda jise tu gina samajta hai, hazar sajdo se deta hai tujhe najat. If you make one sijda for Allah, you not need to bow down for anyone else. Otherwise, you have to go down for everything. So this place is actually a declaration of the Tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the second declaration of this masjid and any masjid is supposed to be what? We belong to one ummah. And our direction is one. We are facing toward one qibla. Right? And in that sense, actually, I want to just share with you that in, in the process of this masjid or other activities, we always face two kind of challenges. One, we have no resources, short of resources. And sometimes we have to do extra effort or extra tawakkul on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? And second thing is, many times it happened that we have some, I can say, difference of opinion, some opposition, some kind of, you know, different kind of priorities, and we face it. But if we just focus on our priority in the sense of Islam, in the sense of Ummah, we can make our masjid a real example of unity with difference of opinion. And if we learn this thing here, we can transfer it, we can use it in our house, in our environment, in outside left. In our time, what we need to take environment of masjid outside masjid, instead of bringing outside environment inside masjid. If we turn this situation, I can say you that the masjid not will be only just for worship place, it will be a leading point for us to guide us in every issue, in every area. And really, we want to make this piece of land, Ardullah is a whole planet, right? But this Ardullah is not belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now. So we are making this point, Ardullah, in the very small point, may it make the whole planet Ardullah. So we have a big dream. We have big desire, you can say, expectation. And of course, I can say you that those who are supporting us, really, they also have some dream. And how we can do it with organizational manner, with a way of example, we can decide after consultation, after making decision and sticking with it, and doing all the things which protect our, I can say, for example, dignity as a Muslim, and also which achieve our target as a Muslim. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us this opportunity. I can say you that this is honor. This is not a burden that we are participating to build a house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq and all kind of support to see and to show that really this masjid is our heart, is our center point of every activity. Jazakumullah khair. As it goes. Jazakallah khair, Dr. Nabi, for that inspirational speech. Uh, next, we have uh, one of our dear brothers from here in Toronto. Uh, and it's our first performer for tonight. Uh, and I was just informed of something that I wasn't aware of till about maybe 10 seconds ago. Uh, Brother Buna Muhammad, that's here with us today. Today was actually supposed to be his wedding day. And he postponed his wedding to be with us here today. SubhanAllah. I don't know if I would do that. I probably wouldn't. But SubhanAllah, his dedication uh, to what he does and dedication to this, to this center uh, speaks a lot. Um, I, I don't know many people that would do that, but SubhanAllah, he did. Uh, just a little bit of background on Brother Buna Muhammad. Uh, he's a critically acclaimed, award-winning writer and performer. His, um, Popular YouTube videos have received over 1 million views.
to date. And as an artist, he's toured across the world, speaking alongside some of the most influential, influential uh, scholars and entertainers of our time. Uh, he's frequently conducted uh, writing workshops and seminars, sharing his experience and expertise in spoken word storytelling with youth of all walks of life. Uh, Brother Buna Muhammad uh, is here with us today. He's going to give us uh, a little bit of a storytelling, some of his comedy. He's also got CDs at the back for anybody that uh, likes his work or wants to hear more from him. Uh, he's got stuff on YouTube and he's also got CDs at the back. Uh, so feel free to purchase his CDs uh, and talk with him and, and understand uh, where he gets his inspiration from. So without further ado, I'm going to ask Brother Buna Muhammad to come up. Can everybody hear me? <clears throat> Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa salatu wa salam ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi jama'in. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. <coughs> Let me take a moment to show some kindness to the folks who thought blindness was a disease that affected the eyes alone. I promise I won't judge you. I barely know how to love you and like fools we preach rules but we don't even follow our own. Everybody needs comfort. Some people find it in this, some people find it in that, and some people just don't find it at all. But this world is full of signs from the moon to the stars and the sky, from the bees and the bugs, like a seed in your blood, like a fiend to a drug, makes you need to look up and question what's up. Why you deal with this stuff when your spirits are crushed and you trek through the rough, but like thunder it struck, said B, and it was all the signs that were sent. They finally make sense. You feel the torment, so you need to repent when your heart is cement it's hard as a brick cause your soul is worth more than the dollars and cents all the money in the world couldn't buy you happiness cause verily it is in the remembrance of Allah that hearts do find rest and do not get it confused I'm not a scholar or a preacher I'm just a regular dude who makes mistakes too but we are reflections true so I can't talk about me without talking about you and who knew we would end up in a place so confused where little boys want to be like little girls and little girls just want to be abused where they terrorize the truth mentally arrest the youth even though there is no law but a laws and mama didn't raise no fool and who knew that expecting the world to treat you fairly because you think you're a good person would be a little like expecting a bull not to attack you because you're a vegetarian you can't begin to learn what you think you already know in man's own ignorance we forgot that women once watched us grow and before that you were a tiny ball of flesh without any bones and before that you were just unknown and now look behold you have the arrogance to assume that you just made it on your own but what were you but a chewed piece of clot before you grew and who knew you would trace your ancestries back to a zoo? You must have really come from apes with your monkey point of views. Even the devil believes in God. So what does that make you? And it's true. Sometimes I feel like Noah preaching to a packed empty room. Nobody want to listen until we start rolling out two by two. I'm a big fan of Abraham. Never break up from Jacob. Joseph had the kind of beauty that you couldn't find and make up. Moses was to Pharaoh what stones are to arrows and David to Goliath what truth is to silence following Solomon. I get down to contrary to popular belief. 
Jesus is my homeboy too. So peace be upon the old crew. Came to teach what we never knew. Even though few caught the groove, they never turned blue. Never confused what was true, even if it was a taboo. Never came for fame or praise, but to praise who they prayed to. Ooh. And who knew that an unlettered man from the middle of the desert would change the whole world from darkness into heaven? You may have every title, every big shot degree, but you still can't explain Alif Allahu Akbar. And who knew there would be so many views and ways to explain that he's closer to you than your juggler vein? So if you complain that God must be cruel, can you give Allah all that he gives to you? From the breath that you breathe, to the trees that you feed, from the eyes that you see, to the sea that you eat. If I cut you, you bleed, then you heal magically. Were the illest machines manufactured for means, the concepts extreme but this world is a dream it's not what it seems filled with lies and deceit the proof is serene so wake up smell the dean praises be to he his oneness supreme totally unique in no need of sleep not like you or me his greatness complete no partners no mates no fathers no sons no discount three in one one just a law so even the birds sing his name the Lord of all the worlds glory be to he and to Allah is our return Jazakallah khair. <laughs> how's everybody feeling tonight or afternoon I should say I'm very honored to be with you all here today. And I hope the brother mentioned, I walked in late. I hope he mentioned how I got here or how my schedule got shifted around. MashaAllah. I was supposed to get married today. SubhanAllah. Right? Did he say that? Did he mention that? My nakah was scheduled for right now. And Sheikh Riyadh, he called me and he says, No, we need you. I said, What am I going to tell my wife? What am I going to tell my future wife? Sorry, I had to change the wedding because I had to go do poetry? SubhanAllah. And somehow, mashallah, that brother has a skill. He actually convinced me to change my wedding till tomorrow. So, alhamdulillah. Jazakallah khair. So, that shows you how much I wanted to be here today. Okay? I, I sacrificed a lot. Alhamdulillah. And I would do it again too. Mashallah. To see all these beautiful faces here and people sincerely here to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and I understand that you know the theme of today's event is revolving around this idea of Jannah subhanallah how many of us want Jannah put your hand up one hand oh, two hands <laughs> I would, a foot too if I could right <laughs> mashallah it's so funny that you know for many of us we talk about Jannah you know we talk about Jahannam we talk about these things, but, you know, there's a reality to them. They're not just ideas. And subhanAllah, you know, last year, last Ramadan, I had the opportunity, I stayed in the city of Toronto for the whole Ramadan. And I had this, this, this fun little game that I played. I wanted to pray Tarawih in 30 different masajid. And you know, alhamdulillah, we have that beautiful pleasure. We can do that. I think in roughly in the GTA, there's about over 50 or 60 masajid. So I would go, you know, masjid hopping here, one day I would be there, one day I would be there, and it was a lot of fun, alhamdulillah. And at one point, in a span of about two days, 
I attended about three Janazah prayers in a span of two days, subhanAllah. You know, you pray over three people and I actually had the opportunity to follow them to the actual graveyard, to the cemetery. And for many of us, unfortunately this is a reality that we don't take heed of. How many of the brothers or sisters in here have ever, you know, washed a body, prepared a body for the grave? How many people? Show of hands. That's a life-changing experience, right? If I could call it anything, I would call it a reality check. Because ultimately, that's what it comes down to, that moment. You know, in this world, mashallah, you could have been a doctor, you could have been a lawyer, you could have been, you know, the President of the United States of America. But on that day, when it's your day to go, you're just dirt. That's it. You know, we wrap you up and we put you in this box. You ever seen this box before? It's like worth maybe $25, <laughs> okay, from Canadian Tire. I don't think it's worth a lot. And you could have accumulated wealth, mashallah. You had everything your eyes could dream of. But now, you're just in a box. And very little will actually come to accompany and help you on that day. And what do we do? We, you know, we call the brothers over, they bring the body out. And I saw this with my own eyes, subhanAllah. Everybody at the graveyard is chatting, everyone's joking around. Oh, how are you doing? I haven't seen you in so long. MashaAllah, how are the kids? Da da da. And then the body comes, and everyone's like, ooh. Then it's reality time. And they bring casket over, everybody has the chance to look, they put you in the ground, you know, we take turns putting dirt over you, they say some words, and that's it, we just leave. But what happens after that point, subhanAllah, it's scary to think about sometimes. And even though we're all here today, and we're all here to enjoy ourselves and to be reminded of the beautiful masajid and the project that's working on. I can't guarantee any of you, you will arrive home safely tonight. That's a reality. The fact that you are not guaranteed another moment on this earth is enough of information for you to take heed of today. I'll tell you a story I heard once of a woman who found out that she had one month to live. SubhanAllah. Imagine today, if somebody told you, you have one month to live, what would happen? What would go through your mind? What would you change? What would you continue doing? So this woman, she wasn't really practicing her religion. And after that point, the doctor informed her, ma'am, you have one month to live. And she said, wow, now I gotta get serious. And so every day for the rest of that month, MashaAllah, she started wearing hijab. She started maybe even wearing naqab. She started praying all of her salah. She started praying at night. She started fasting. She started making dhikr, everything. You would say, hello sister, how are you doing today? She would say, Allahu Akbar, subhanAllah. She was wasting no time. She spoke in dhikr, MashaAllah. And they asked her after that month, and she returned back to the doctor. And the doctor said, Ma'am, I'm sorry to inform you that we made a mistake. Actually, you're completely fine. <laughs> and she said, Are you serious? He said, Yes. The test results came in, and there's nothing wrong with you. You're good to go. And she said, Seriously? I wasted that whole month? SubhanAllah. It's funny, I mean, if you think about it, but we do the same thing. We do the same thing every day. Because if I told you you had 24 hours to live, there is something you would change for sure if you had any sense in your head. So why wait? Why wait for that moment? Why not do it now? Since you're not actually guaranteed anything, 
You're not guaranteed another 10 minutes. You're not guaranteed another hour. You're not guaranteed another month. Why don't you make sure that every good, every day is your best day? Why don't you make sure your best deeds are your last deeds? Why not? What are you waiting for? And I'm happy to see many young people here today. And I want to extend that offer to them as well. You're not guaranteed anything more than your parents. The angel of death does not discriminate. Does not discriminate. Not by your age, not by your color, not by your height, not by your weight, nothing. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us all people who take heed and people who are Ahl al-Jannah, insha'Allah. I have a poem that I'd like to share with you all. And it's a reflection on this idea of death and ultimately a reality for every single one of us. I want you to pay attention and I want you to think about this person who I'm describing and embody this person. Imagine if this person was you. Insha'Allah, this piece is called Too Late. You're dying, and you don't even know it. Never saw it coming. But you were so young, so much life, so much loving, so much hope, so much sorrow. I guess so much for tomorrow. Your family will miss you dearly. Still can't believe that you're gone. The news hasn't sunk in. They still think you're coming home. When things don't go our way, the entire world must be wrong. They say it wasn't your time, but to Allah we belong. Your soul left your body before you had the chance to say goodbye. It caught you unexpected. Within the blink of an eye, you were busy with the world when you felt a tingle in your spine. Your heart began to race. Your eyes became blind. Coming closer to the light, was this a trick from your mind or did you really just cross this life's finish line? The cost of deception is that everyone's got to die in a world where everybody is just trying to stay alive. Even if you aren't ready, it could come at any time. Doesn't ask for your permission, doesn't need you to co-sign. The dirt is getting ready and your hole has been assigned. Your mother helps to wash your body one last time. Prayed your janazah, it was raining cats and dogs. They put you in the ground and now you're all alone. Hearing footsteps of your friends as they begin to moan. We wish you all the best, so sad you had to go. People talk about death, but what about when death talks to you? Rips the soul from your body, will you finally say it's true? The good may die young, but the bad still gotta die too. Every soul shall taste a sip from this restless brew. This is the day you were promised your grand debut. No turning back now, no makeups, no redos. From this point on, there is no need to review. It's just do or die, or in your case, just do. It's all you. The a real absolute moment of truth and just like that perfectly on cue two angels enter your grave sit you up and ask you who is your Lord but in this world you only worshipped you obedient to your desires, a slave to your own views. What is your religion? 
<laughs> Don't say it was this Dean. Your last name never stopped you from your wicked routines. Who is your prophet? You heard the people say his name, but you never stopped to defend him when they spoke it in vain. You didn't pray the long nights. You didn't fast the long days. You didn't even bother trying to seek forgiveness for mistakes. You didn't have any fear. You weren't sincere. That Quran on your bookshelf was just a souvenir. In fact, it was quite clear that you loved this place and never thought you would have to witness what awaits. Well, get ready for your fate. The promise the promise of your Lord is great when you're brought right back forth from that dirt you came and make no mistake the scale makes no mistakes indeed every deed shall receive its due weight so deceive as you please until you see it's too late you would squeeze the seven seas for the chance to prostrate where are your American idols let them keep you safe or perhaps you will find mercy in the money you chased why couldn't you just stop to take a break and see into your future <laughs> but now look at you you are the definition of a loser doomed to dwell in hell oh well at least it suits you Every moment awake, you receive your reward to feed on a fire whose fuel is men and stones, boiling pus in chains and yokes, skin ripped from flesh, from flesh till bones, begging the keepers of hell to lighten the load. But this is exactly what you asked for. For. You chose to torment, you refused to repent, you had the answers to the test and you still didn't prep. For eternity you will rest in the lowest depth, step by step, I must confess you're dying. But you haven't died yet. But with every single heartbeat, you get closer to your final breath. Yesterday, you were one day closer to your grave. Today, who even knows if you'll make it home okay? I just pray that you are ready for your final exam until that day don't you dare die except in a state of Islam heaven and hell are just the choices that we make so turn back to your Lord before it's too late Jazakallah khair, Brother Buna Muhammad, for that inspirational poetry. Um, Brother Buna Muhammad uh, made a point to mention to me that the CDs that he's going to sell at the back, part of the proceeds will go back to the masjid. So uh, please buy his CDs. Uh, he's got plenty of poetry on there, a lot of inspirational stuff that inshallah will change our lives going forward. Uh, next, I'm going to ask Brother uh, Umar Abdul Jabbar to come up. Uh, he's one of the volunteers at ICCM. He's going to take us through a presentation on uh, the center that we have today and the vision for the future. Jazakallah khair. Can you 
Turn this up. If I could please have all the brothers and sisters, if you see some empty, uh, empty seats beside you, you can just try to fill them in. We have an overflow of sisters coming in. We just want to make sure everything to the far left is complete. So if we can just do that quickly before we move on, that'd be great. And same thing with the brothers, if you can just have, uh, if you have any empty seats between you, you can just move further to the right, my right, your left. Before I begin, I just wanted to make you a quick to uh, ask for all of you to make a quick to ask for my dear brother Buna. He's getting actually he's getting married tomorrow, inshallah. So you can just make dua for him and his wife. For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless them with amazing children and a long life, inshallah. That we wish. Actually, one more thing I want to touch. His actual nikah was supposed to be today. He called his wife and said, I can't do it today because I have an event. Now imagine the torment he had to go through <laughs> to change his wedding day tomorrow. Yeah, I'm there. That's another story. I don't think I should walk that way. Perfect. All right. My brothers and sisters in Islam, I want you to imagine. Imagine walking into a place that as soon as you walk into it, you say, Alhamdulillah, this is a masjid. Imagine a place that you walk into it. You put this big smile on your face. And you feel complete, utter serenity. You feel complete, utter peace. You where your heart is content and your tongue keeps repeating. Alhamdulillah, this feels like a masjid. Now imagine the same scenario at the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Where at that same very time, the masjid in itself was the center of gravity. Where it pulled, where it was the black hole. And it pulled everything inside around it where the Muslims will come to unite, where the Muslims will come to pray, and the, where Muslims will come to entertain, to socialize. Where the Muslims would gather to hear the messages about their wars, where they would gather to hear the messages about the community. So and so is sick today, please make dua for him. So and so is sick today, please make dua for her. Where the masjid in itself and its people that, in, that lived in it would know each and every single person that came. That built relations with the people who prayed. That built relations with the people and the young who played. That built relations based on the social structures they built around the masjid. Now this is the same exact vision that we have gathered here today to build. And each and every single one of you here are a part of it. And you have the chance of a lifetime to build for your future, to build for these young people that you see here. Because Alhamdulillah, due all due respect to our elderly, we have to move on. Just like Buna reminded us that we do not know when our time will come, whether it be young or old, we have to go. But before we go, what do we do? Do we stay hold, do we, do we take a hold of our pockets and not share the wealth amongst the community where we feed, where we feed the needy and help the poor, where we build the muskets for the, so the young can come and play? Yes, play inside the masjid. It is a common misconception nowadays that the masjid is not a place to 
play, it is not a place to do anything else but to pray. Islam is one of those unique religions. It is one of those unique religions where the masjid in itself is the complete community center where knowledge is shared, where people are educated, where people discuss, where people of different opinions come together. Where one person does not say that this is the way I pray and this is the right way. Or where the other person does not say you are wrong because this is the way you pray. Because you are doing the same that the things that the Jahaliyyah people did and caused division amongst themselves. It is a place where we respect our brother for who he is, whether he has a beard or not, whether he wears a thobe or pants. We respect him because he's our brother. It is the same place where if a sister walks inside here without a hijab, no one looks at her differently because she is a Muslim and she is coming in a place which is protected. That is a masjid where we feel peace, where we feel at ease, where we are calm and relaxed. Where when we see a brother, we just smile and say, Alhamdulillah, you're here. <laughs> Alhamdulillah, my brothers and sisters, these are the foundations we want to build this masjid around. And to get there, we need your support. And how we get there is up to you. We have needs for finance, and we have financial needs in order to get there. We have to pay off the loans. We have, we need the money to build and construct and build that structure over here so we can offer those same very services. Given what we have already, alhamdulillah, we have already started services for the youth. Where the youth come here on a weekly basis just to chill, just to come and talk, just to come and play and pray where we have Taraweeh and the Eid Salat and five daily prayers. And these services have already started. Quran classes, NCNA, Muslim Children of North America, which is a project of Ikna Sisters, alhamdulillah. And these services exist for us to take from and to use and to send our children in that direction too. Because my brothers and sisters, I can guarantee you this, that 90% of the youth, that 95% of the children that are grown up over here are going through difficulties in their schools. And as a parent, you will never understand. Never understand because what they are dealing with, you can never deal with all due respect. Because what they face is much different than what you faced in your time. What you faced 10, 20 years ago is a lot different than what they face now. But I can also guarantee you this, my brothers and sisters, that if you yourself, if you, your, your own heart is attached to the masjid, and you come to the masjid for salah, and they bring your children with you, their heart will be attached to this structure. At one time, they will understand and they will say, Alhamdulillah, I need to come back to this place. Right now, we have started a weekly halakha for the youth, for brothers and sisters as well, for Ant classes, picnics, as well as distribution for zakat through Ikna Relief, Alhamdulillah. Apart from that, this, bu this building or this structure itself was built upon the foundation of having a vision for the youth in its entirety. And I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as all of you should, that that vision does not change. Because this structure, this building, so many few people have those opportunities where they can come and send their kids without a worry, 
where instead of going outside to a club, they can come back to the masjid and play. They can come back, play basketball, badminton, cricket, tennis. And at the same time where they can educate themselves through these three. We are offering full-time Tahseez al-Quran program, iftar during Ramadan, conferences, as well as activities for the new Muslims. And we have plans on going and building on top of this, inshallah. So we can create libraries for the Muslims. That same vision I taught to you when I started, that the, the masjid was the center of education and knowledge to build upon that we are hoping inshallah with your help we can create a library specifically for muslims so they can educate themselves offer funeral services and full-time high school inshallah our scholars as brother zahid mentioned before our dr iqbal nadi who is one of the most renowned scholars in all of north america alhamdulillah same with Sheikh Uthman, that Brother Zahid again introduced, and I don't need to read this whole thing because that would take forever. <laughs> but you get the point, subhanAllah. Just to give you a simple breakdown, this is what we're looking at as our monthly expenses. Full-time prayer space, inshallah, as well as a youth facility, all-purpose facility for the youth. Now, we are going with a plan where we can adopt a square foot of masjid, at thirty-five hundred dollars, inshallah, the pledge forms are already the pledge forms are already at the back. So, if you know and if you want to contribute to this to this masjid itself, which has envisioned itself amongst uh, for the youth itself, please come forward and help. Adopt a square foot if you can, inshallah. And lastly, once we collect the money from this, and after me, Sheikh Ala will come, inshallah. And, the, uh, and our volunteers will go around and distribute the pledge forms. I just want to give you a simple breakdown of how our fund distribution will be. 60% of the funds will have to go towards our repayments, loan repayments. Then our 5% for construction, 15 for maintenance, and 20 for gym facilities. My brothers and sisters, in a conclusion, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us the ability to do good in our lives, to build for the future, to help the youth. And I promise you this, that if you think for the future, your ajr and your reward will be great, inshallah. If you invest in your children, every father, every mother wants to invest in their children, their own children. Islam is not a selfish religion. Islam is a communal religion where the entire community comes and they distribute funds amongst each other. No one is on their own. Everyone is together. So let us, inshallah, build on that. With that being said, Jazakallah khairan. And I will pass it off back to Brother Zahid. Oh, sorry. And I will pass it back off to Sheikh Ala. Inshallah, Sheikh Ala to just. Sheikh Ala, for those of you who don't know, is uh, the Imam at Islam. And he has done many events such as this, and he's one of the most renowned scholars that we have in, uh, in Canada itself. And he as well goes around teaching people, educating. And Alhamdulillah, we have the blessing of access to such to you. To you, Flay Sheikh Ala, Sheikh Nadi, Sheikh Uthman, Sheikh Riyad. Most of them who live within the community who understand the issues of the community. With that being said, Jazakallah khair. And I just ask kindly of Sheikh Ala to come back. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.
بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته نبي بعد المفتش في نصان لا يكون كما لا تشكيلة حايد ما شاء الله it's a beautiful turnout and it's really very positive it's so nice to see a lot of people actually want to do good want to do well I'm pretty sure that you're here for a reason I'm sure that you're not here you know for brother Bona Zala Khairan or even Sheikh Riyad Wazazi, one of my teachers and, uh, you know, best brothers I've met, may Allah bless him, inshallah. But to pretend that this half is brother uh, Riyad Wazazi and this half will, will be me. Unfortunately, he's coming, he's not coming tonight, but inshallah, he's left the message, inshallah, that we will, uh, we will hear. However, uh, alhamdulillah, it is so nice, wallahi, to see some of the brothers that I, I hugged when I came in, familiar faces, smiling faces. Um, well wishers and, and, and well doers, alhamdulillah. And with, with the respected panels and the imams, especially one of my teachers. Uh, but I have no idea what the answer is. Who do you call? Ghostbusters? 911? No. I call Dr. Nadri. <laughs> and he knows it too. So I, I have a lot of respect and uh, admiration for Dr. Nadri, not only here, and actually when I even, before I met him, in Calgary, I heard so much good about him from Allah bless him, Jazallah khairan, and best of, uh, uh, you know, inshallah for this center and all the efforts that they're doing with Sheikh Osman, may Allah bless him too. So you have a beautiful uh, combination, inshallah, for this masjid. May Allah bless it for you, inshallah. So to start, who has children? Just raise your hands if you have children. MashaAllah. All right, very good. Now, who's not married yet? <laughs> Just kidding. Just kidding, man. <laughs> so, okay, I got you now. All right, now I know. I know who's, who's not married yet. So I'll work on that, inshallah. I'll look at him. We can do something later. <laughs> Fantastic. So we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put an in amana in your neck. I think last khutbah, even at Isma, when we talked about the uh, al-falah, we talked about that, the amana. And we said the most important of all when Prophet Muhammad sallallahu says it is sufficient of a sin that you lead astray those who you shepherd, or who you actually look over. And before we go any further, and I forget, we have a, a great news, inshallah. Brother George, could you come, come up here, please? Sit there, if I may. You know, it's a great, come, come up, please. Okay, fantastic. I was just introduced to Brother George. Uh, he's not just good looking, he's also, <laughs> A manager and smart man, inshallah. Are you married, brother George? Alrighty then, so he's still on the market, sisters. I mean, we're talking, we've taken bids. Uh, no, we have a market. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Very embarrassing enough already. Okay, Allah help you guys. The good news is that, alhamdulillah, I heard yesterday, brother George became a Muslim. Takbir. <laughs> alhamdulillah, Allah. It's so beautiful that you see these, uh, uh, the signs of Allah and the promise that you see that this religion will Will, be, will prevail over all. And this is the first one that I heard that we have here in this masjid. Alhamdulillah. May Allah increase more and more. And this center becomes the, the source of good, the source of da'wah, the source of gathering and magnets, inshallah, to that proper way and the proper path to Islam, alhamdulillah. So I just wanted to welcome you personally and welcome to the biggest family in the face of the earth, 1.5 billion brothers and sisters. May Allah help you, man. Jazakallah. So Jazakallah khair and welcome aboard. Barakallah khair, brother khair. So now I want to give you a quote when Ali ibn Abi Talib was actually asked. He was asked a question. The question was, how do I know, this person was asking him, how do I know if I'm from Ahl al-Dunya or Ahl al-Akhirah? How do I know if I'm the people that love dunya, thus this life, or love the hereafter more. He said, Ali ibn Abi Talib in reply, radiallahu anhu an al bayt al-Athar ajma'in and the sahaba ajma'in, he said, he said, ask yourself a simple question. This Ali ibn Abi Talib is asking this person that asked him the question, which one am I? From people of the dunya, this life, or the people of the hereafter? Which one do I think? He asked him, I'rud nafsak. He says, ask yourself, when somebody is asking you to give for the sake of Allah and somebody is coming 
to give you money. Which one do you like more? This is a rhetorical question. I don't want to hear the answer, but just be honest with yourself. <laughs> the tough part is, he says, if you like the person that is coming to ask you to donate for the sake of Allah, you are of the people in the hereafter. But if you are the person that like people coming and give you more money, more, you are the of the people of that dunya. So there is your measuring stick. It's a difficult one indeed. It's not easy to give. Because again, the proof is in the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned, It is the decoration, the lowerment of life. That loves of the whims and desires. Among them, the hoarding of the silver and gold. But it is not easy to give. We know that because Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned in the hadith that you will have to fight 70 shaitans in order for you to give this money. They will always remind you of things. I'm just paving the path in order for us to see which one you are and I'm sure you're here for a reason and it's not for the dinner. Dinner is good. Is there biryani? This is before you go on because otherwise I'm stopping right now, man. If there is no biryani, we can't keep going. <laughs> That's every time I go to a, like, a, like a wedding or something, I have to ask for a couple of things. Is there biryani or mango ice cream? If there is none, then I'm out of here. Okay, so mashallah. Now we're good. Alhamdulillah. Now like, it, 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 I feel like it's the biryani deli already. Allah help us Allah. <laughs> so now my wife is jealous of biryani. <laughs> but she's not here today, so I can talk to her too. So. so alhamdulillah, we already have the bases. We have the basis that we need to do this. And you see the beautiful project, the cause, and the reasons for it. The reasons are actually that come out of that, your own flesh and blood, your own mind and heart and soul, your heart. The people that you would actually go hungry in order for them to be fed. These are the people that you would go thirsty in order for them to be quenched. These are the people you had sleepless nights in order for them to go to sleep. These are the people when you actually see them cry, you would cry. When you see them laugh, you would laugh. These are the people that you actually dedicated your whole life to serve. These are your children. So we ask you a simple question again. How much would you pay in order for you to save your children? Especially out here. How many of you have heard that I used to have a son that used to have a beard? Or a sister or a daughter that I used to have be wearing hijab. All of a sudden, she's no longer wearing the hijab. And that brother shaved the beard, changed his name from Muhammad to Mo. And Sister Fatima is now Queen Latifah. And they've been watching all those movies from, of course, where else? Bollywood. No, that one. That beautiful Indian movie that comes in to do what? Yes, we know it. Boy loves girl, girl loves boy. And of course, they have to have a. Of course, we know the story. Da, 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 the father, the villain, he says, No. And what happens? They elope, they run away, they get married somewhere. I'm not going to go through the story, I'm sure you know what you heard it too. But you understand. But now, these are true stories. I get them in the office. Sheikh Nadawi, Dr. Nadawi, I'm sure, hears about them too. But these are the facts, if we don't keep them in the masajid. Where would they end up? In a movie somewhere. Those two, singing and dancing, because that's what they do. They run away, and of course the movie takes you to this beautiful field. Where? In nowhere, La La Land. It's true. And they come into what? Slow motion. This girl running, and the other guy's running. Right? And you see the sun is shining, and the birds are flying. And the guy, when he smiles, what happens? Bing! That diamond-looking thing, shiny. And the slow motion of the hair and his specs are moving, the tight, whatever, the abs. The guy been doing aerobics and stuff. And of course, he has to have on a white horse, right? Have you seen that movie before? No? Just me? All right. White horse, man. The girls love that stuff. White horse. Looks like, uh, what's his name? Uh, Fab, right? 
Do you know that guy? He has to look like the Fabio because he looked like a Harlan Quinn. You know those, uh, <laughs> those novels? You know those ones? Now what happens is it's a sunny day and all of a sudden it's raining. Where? Where is it raining from? It's more romantic, of course. And again, out of nowhere pops a tree. And this tree, behind it, magically appear what? Again, those dancers. <laughs> like Brother Azhar Rahman, Amazing! If that's where you want to, your children to end up, look like or do, Allah help you, Allah. But you have a golden opportunity, Allah. It's an amazing, this place was the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Go back to the Quran and find out. These, the homes of Allah were given permission by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be here or established. So you have this golden opportunity inshallah to make this vision a reality. Make this dream true. Be part of history. You can imagine after you die, as you heard by the bone of Zallah Khair and a beautiful poet. Wallahi, don't you get these goosebumps man? Amazing. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding you, reminding you about this specific thing. Oh Lord, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding us about this verse. Just to make sure that we have the proper perspective on things in this life. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَأَنْفِقُوا in a fi'l amr command verb says, then give from what? Spin from what? Minna razaqnakum. He's telling you that this money is not yours. This comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fi ula. Minna razaqnakum from what the provisions we've given you, the sustenance that we have provided you with. Min qabla before ayyati ahadakum al maut. Death will come unto you. As if he's trying to tell you that this death is like a person is trying to look for you. Since you were born according to Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, he says it's like this maut. He's looking for you. Before that, you have a chance. And as soon as you see it, what happens? You will say, Rabbi, my Lord. Why do you say Rabbi? Because it's the one that provides, the Lord, the one that provides. Now you remember, Rabbi, lawla akhartani. Allah, just give me one chance. Just give me one more chance. To do what? Fa. Fa what in the Quran? It's called Fa ta'qib. So the scholar says the first thing you will come back to life and hope to do if Allah gives you a chance to do what? Some of the scholars says it's the cat. In charity, obligatory or voluntary. And be among the righteous. Can you imagine? Allah is reminding you of this before it's too late. So we have a task. We have a goal and I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make it easy for us. And to accept from us and make it sincere, insha'Allah. Say Ameen. I don't want you to look at the mountain. Because it's a big, it's a big order on the list. When I ask the brothers how much is the, uh, is our target for today, for tonight, they told me. Even though there were different opinions, but this is a fiqh issue, right? Sir? <laughs> I heard one number and the other brother held one number. But we'll take, we'll go with that. With that number that I was told, inshallah. But I don't want to look at it in one, one shot. Inna al-jibala min al-hasa. Mountains are made of pebbles. And we can, be, we can do it, inshallah. We want to sound like Bob the Builder. Can we build it? Yes, yes we can, inshallah. Allahu Akbar. So we're thinking positive already. Alhamdulillah. Our target tonight, inshallah, is only $250,000. Did you get that? Easy, inshallah. Easy, inshallah. So it's only $250,000. Well, we can get it. Maybe just one person here can just say, you know what, just go home. You guys want to eat? Go ahead. Don't worry, don't worry, but don't waste the time. Just go ahead, you eat, I'll take care of it. <laughs> so who has $250,000 right now? Anybody has $250,000? No? Just raise your hand if you do. <laughs> Actually, it is $250,000. But we can do it, inshallah. Inshallah, we can do it. You gotta think positive. Seek assistance in Allah and Allah will make it easy for us, inshallah. So let us work on the first hundred thousand. Let's work on the first hundred thousand. Say Bismillah. Wallahi, Ya Rabb. Allahumma ftihana fi duha al-alifina bika Ya Rabb al-alamin. Say Ameen, inshallah. So let's break that fifth, first hundred thousand dollars into two. Let's start with two. 
Unless there is one person here, one family can take it on. Is there anybody there that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed him with a business or something, inheritance or something, not 649, <laughs> something inshallah that can do it. Maybe one person amongst us, it happened before. As a matter of fact, I mean, Sheikh uh, will know that even uh, some different countries or different even uh, cities, they give more than that, subhanAllah. But let's start with just uh, Allah Kareem. First hundred thousand dollars, do we have one person amongst us that can take it on? Or one family that can say, you know what? Amongst our family, we will take responsibility for the first hundred thousand dollars. Do we have that first person or the first family? To raise that hand and say, Ha anada, here I am. That this hand will actually testify for you on Judgment Day when you take your book with your right hand side, inshallah. Do we have that? The sister's going, You know, be careful, okay, that's a hundred thousand dollar raise, man. If you raise it, you own it, man. Before we go any further, I want to remind you of something. Hadith of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When he saw, he saw a group of people coming in, the tribe was called Mudar. They were very poor. They're coming in and not very, like holes in the clothes, coming in, dragged, they haven't bathed, they don't have enough food or water or even money. So Prophet Muhammad sallallahu when he saw them, he, the vein popped and his face was red. And he started saying, Tasattaku, Tasattaku, give, give for your brethren, give for your brethren. Then a man came in, his uh, thug was full of things he wanted to give them. So Prophet Muhammad Sallam at this specific point he says, Man sanna sunnatan hasana fil islam falahu ajraha wa ajra man amala biha la yanqus min ujurihim shay'a. Those who do righteous deeds in Islam and those who follow them to imitate them as in doing righteous deeds, they will get the reward of what they've done and get the reward for everybody else that follows them till judgment day and it does not decrease any of those who follow them and they're doing the righteous deeds and the scholars will tell you this specific hadith was narrated when it comes to sadaqah charity so maybe we're aiming too high but wallahi i have faith this is a good community inshallah let's sneak into two Let's split the first $100,000 into two. Maybe we have one person amongst us, one brother or one sister. Or one whole family can get together and say, you know what, I want to be among those first two. Maybe I want to be that first person because the first person will raise that hand and take this on, will get the reward for everything else that comes after this night, till the end. And the rewards that you will get till judgment day, that everything happens in this masjid. I want you to think as a business person, Think smart. Don't think about what I'm giving now and what I'm decreasing. La wallahi. I want you to think that every prayer here is on your right hand side scale. Every halaqa here that is on your right hand side scale. Every brother that will come and embrace Islam like brother George will be on the right hand side scale. Everything that they're taught here, even from that shaykh, is Allah khair brother Uthman. Even the taught in the Quran or the shaykh in halaqas and everything that you hear and done in this masjid. The masajid, the youth that are coming back on your right hand side scale. So how much will you pay for that? So do we have the first person that will raise their hand that will take on the first 50,000 or the family over the year, inshallah? I know it's not easy. I know you're thinking. You're thinking about, you know, my Lexus is getting old. It's, old. it's like two years old now. It's pasté. I want to get the 2012 before the come out. And I need um, five garage instead of the three garage house. And it has to be on the water. And I need to get some other stuff that I don't need. That's what I'm thinking. Shaitan is talking now, right? As Shaitan, you remind me of this list, right? The kids need this, the kids need that, and all these things that happens, that comes from shaitan. But Rahmat, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, no, he gives you much more. Okay, let's start it off. 
Four. We're looking for four. We still need to get that first hundred thousand dollars in our belt, inshallah. So when we're breaking it down to four, four brothers or four sisters or four families, twenty-five thousand dollars over the year, inshallah, for the first four. Do we have the first out of the four? One brother or one sister? Or one family that will take the first twenty-five thousand on? May Allah make it easy, inshallah. That first one is very important, wallahi. But brothers and sisters, that first one comes with a price. Yes, it's not easy to be the first one. I know that. But the reward is abundant. You will get the rest of the reward for the end of the night, wallahi. It's amazing. Everything that is collected will be on your right side hand scale. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, it's okay to do this. To raise your hand and encourage others to do that. وَإِن تُبْدُوا الصَّدَقَاتِ فَنِعِمَّا هِي If you actually raise it, and it, raise it with the hand and, uh, or the verbal or anything and to tell people to encourage them to be shaitan and work for Allah subhanahu wa jalla fi ula Allah subhanahu wa jalla فَنِعِمَّا هِي is good وَإِن تُخْفُوهَا But when it says the and, when if you hide it, where? It says لِلْفُقَرَاء For the poor, meaning between you and him or her only but in public places, it is actually recorded. It is better to raise and actually encourage others to do the same. All right, we need to hit this one. If we don't hit this one, it may be difficult. But inshallah, we will. We need to get that first $100,000. So we'll break it into five now. We'll break it into five. We're looking for five brothers or sisters or families. You got to help. You got to dig deep, brothers and sisters. Wallahi. I don't mean dig deep in your pockets. Dig deep in your heart. Dig deep in your pockets, we'll take two. I mean, we'll take American Express, Visa, checks, anything, you name it, man. American pesos, anything, we'll take anything. So we have five. Five people to help us for the first, first 100,000. Do we have the first out of the five for 20,000? Do we have a brother or sister raise their hand and say, I'll take it on. And I know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will grant me something better in this life and hereafter. Do we have that strong heart of a believer that heard Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu says, مَا نَقُصَ مَا مِنْ صَدَقَةً That your wealth will never decrease from the sadaqah. It is that said by the one that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala said about لَا يَنْتِقُ عَنَ الْهَوَىٰ إِنْ هُوَ إِلَّا وَحْيُ يُوحَىٰ He does not speak of his own whims and desires. It is only a revelation that is bestowed upon him. So if you believe in Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala fi ula, and you believe in Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu when he says, your wealth will never decrease from sadaqah, who will be the first one to say, I believe in that? Because sadaqah comes from sitq. Sadaqah comes from truth. The truth of your iman. Do we have one person, one brother or one sister or one family will take on the first 20,000? How much time do we have? <laughs> Half an hour. Okay. All right. Here's my final offer. <laughs> You can call a friend, you can do whatever you like, man. You can pull the audience, this doesn't have to be a final answer. But can we break it into ten at least? Brothers and sisters, do we have the first one? We have the first one. Allahu Akbar. MashaAllah. Jazakallah khairi akhi. May Allah bless you for that. We have one. We need nine more. Jazakallah khairi akhi. May Allah bless you, Shaykh. What's your name, Abdullah? Brother Murad. Barakallahu fika wa ahlika wa malik, inshaAllah. May Allah bless you, your health, and your wealth, and your family. He's the father of Riyadh? MashaAllah, Abu Riyadh. Jazakallah khair, ya khair. Wallahi, it's beautiful. Alhamdulillah. So we break in the ice. Alhamdulillah. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with his mercy, and inshallah will come. So we have one, we're missing nine. Who can be the second on this beautiful plateau? Take this opportunity, golden opportunity. To come forward and say, here I am. Oh Allah, I am given from what you've given me, knowing that I'll get it back. I'll get it back in this dunya. No doubts about it. But I will get multiples in the hereafter. Who can be the second person? The brother or sister? Or a family that can say, I'll take on the second 10,000. Do we have the brother and the sister that says, you know what? I know that I may not even have it. But Allah, these are true stories. I've been told by other brothers. I didn't have the money to give at that time. I didn't have it. But when I gave it with yaqeen, with certainty that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will fulfill His promise, 
When I went home, on my answering machine, there was a contract, a job that is waiting for me. So who can be the second one? Even if your money is tight now, you know what this fellow says? If you want money, spend money. Where do you get it from? Anfiq, umfiq alayk. Oh child of Adam, spend, I will spend upon you. If you want more money, give money. You will get it back, but don't give it with the challenge. Okay, let's see man. All right, you said uh, if you spend money, I'll give you more money, great. Here you go, here's the money, and you go home, and you wait for the phone call. <laughs> it's, been, uh, it's been two hours, man. <laughs> Don't do with that spirit, inshallah. Do it with the yaqeen that Allah will reward you for this. We still need the second person for the 10,000. Do we have a second brother or a sister? I usually have a competition between the brothers and sisters. We have a brother already come forward. Do we have a sister? I know sisters have money, man. I know you have money. I know you're digging. I know you're keeping, but you're going, you know, I need some more gold. Hmm. Ten thousand dollars, that's a lot of gold. But it will come back to you. It will come back to you. Do we have a sister? Do we have a sister that we have one for ten thousand dollars? A one family can take it on? I won't tell your husband, inshallah, don't worry. You can you can get it from him, his account, and he's he just get the reward for it. He'll get the reward for it too. Tell you, do we have anybody else on the ten thousand plateau? Brothers and sisters? Or a family that can come together and says, okay, we'll take it? I know it's not easy, Wallahi, I know that. But amazingly enough, the scholars say uh, there is two types of risk. Most people don't know that. Two types of risk. The first one is called risk al-jalb. The second one is called risk al-salb. The first one is when you actually get sustenance, when you get provisions. When you get provisions. This is normal. You get something, that's what you expect. But there's another type of risk that most people don't know about. It's called risk of salb. Like your child could have been in a car accident. You would have paid so much money. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protects you. Why? Because of the sadaqah. The sadaqah, you know what happens? It goes up and fights. It just keeps the trials and uh, the fitting away from you. That's what happens. That's called risk of salb. Or somebody could be ill. Or your loss of your home, or loss of a business, or loss of a job, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will keep you that. Will give you barakah in your money. Same money that you have, you will buy so much more. That's called risk of salb. So give with your heart strong, brothers and sisters. Last call, wallahi, last call. I won't ask for it anymore. Jazakallah khair yaq. We have the second brother. Takbir. So we have two brothers, alhamdulillah, with 10,000. Do we have the third to make it with? You know, Allah SWT has a, you know, we say the odd numbers are more beloved to Allah. So let's go for the third. Do we have the third? The third person for $10,000, a brother or a sister or a family? Do we have him? Last call. Going once? Going twice? Oh, close, so close. <laughs> so close yet so far. <laughs> okay. Right on. So we have 20,000. That's fine. Alhamdulillah. It's a beautiful start. We're still looking for the first 100. So let's work on the 80. Let's go for 5,000. So I'm looking for 16 brothers and sisters for $5,000 for the whole year. You can do it, Allah. We need to get over that one in order for us to establish this goal. Inshallah, we will. Allah Kareem, Inshallah. So we're looking, Allah is equal here. We have one, Barakallah Fiq, Takbir. MashaAllah. I know some brothers and sisters don't like this Takbir thing, but you know, it's fine. Whatever it takes. We have the first brother. May Allah bless you, Akhi Wallah. Do we have the second brother? We have it. Allahu Akbar. We have it. Takbir. MashaAllah. We have two. I'm sorry. Ah, but then, I love you, man. I mean, I hope he's not homophobic or anything. From afar, okay? okay? Okay, we have the third, Allahu Akbar. We have the fourth, MashaAllah, beautiful. We have the fifth, Allahu Akbar, this is beautiful. Don't stop me now, man. Just keep raising your hand like 4th of July. Keep it popping. <laughs> we have five already, Allahu Akbar, that's beautiful. Five for 5,000 each. Do we have any sisters? Dig deep, ukti. You don't have to wear, uh, what, what are the, I don't know the, uh, the fashion things. May Allah, I don't know, may Allah increase my ignorance on that one. What is the fashion thingy? Whatever. 
You don't have to wear this uh, fashion thing. You can wear, inshallah, something else. Do we have one sister, inshallah, to lead us up? One sister for $5,000. Do we have it? No, we need warming up. We need warming up. I, okay, I understand. All right. Okay. But the jewelry is coming off, right? I know I know the sisters will be going, you know, here, take that, take this, and take that. I mean, man, inshallah. I like it. No way, man. You're dreaming, dude. Okay. So we have five. Do we have number six for $5,000, brothers and sisters, or even a family? Well, why? Just get together with your family and say, you know what? We'll take on that $5,000. we will take it on. Do we have it? Number six. Do we have number six? This brother's recording, son. I'm going every time I'm going. <laughs> He'll take it. Allah Akbar. Allah, I didn't mean that. But may Allah bless you. The brother actually raised his hand. <laughs> Jazakallah khair. Anybody else recording that's raising their hand? <laughs> Allah is equal khair. That is awesome. Jazakallah khair, my brother. Barakallah khair. Now we have six. Can we go for number seven? Yes. Who do we have as number seven, inshallah? Remember Umar al Khattab, radiallahu anhu, he said, Tabahat al A'mal. Tabahat al A'mal. The actions and deeds were actually doing what? They were boasting amongst one another. Tabahat. And the Salah said, I'm the best. The fasting said, I'm the best. Everything he says. He says, فَقَالَتِ الصَّدَقَةَ أَنَا أَفْضَلُكُمْ The Sadaqah says, I am the best of you. According to Umar al-Khattab, radiallahu anhu. So who could be number seven? Number seven, brothers and sisters, for $5,000. For over the year, you can do it, inshallah. I know we're here for a reason, and I know you want to get this place. It's for your own good. It's for your own family. It's for your own children. The best investment you can get, you will get that reward till the hereafter. And I'll remind you of something else. Remember when Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, when the child of Adam dies, the actions and deeds are cut off except of three. And I want you to remember these three. Oh, mashallah. Yeah. Jazakallah khair, ukhti. I'm hoping this comes from an ukhti. Not akhi, inshallah. <laughs> so there's a beautiful golden bangle that we will actually uh, do auctions in the end, inshallah. Jazakallah khair. Thank you, brother. When Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa says these three things are not cut off. After you die, there are three things that are not cut off. One thing he says, Sadaqatun jariya. Ongoing charity. Remember them well. Ilmun yuntafa'u bihi. Beneficial knowledge. Waladun salih yad'u lahu. A righteous child that will make dua for them. Do you remember the three? Ongoing charity, beneficial knowledge, and righteous child that will do dua for you after you die. Remember these three? Where can you find these three? Right here in the center. Right here in the masjid. Sadaqah jariyah? You couldn't find a better sadaqah jariyah than building a masjid. You couldn't find it. Because even Prophet Muhammad says, if you build a masjid, or you build a house for Allah, even on a small as a peak of a bird that makes a hole in the ground, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will build a castle for you in Jannah. You couldn't find a better sadaqah jariyah. That everything goes on in here, you will get that. You couldn't find a better sadaqah jariyah than this one. So after you die, you're investing in this place. Number two, beneficial knowledge. Which knowledge is better than the Quran and Sunnah? Is there a better knowledge than the Quran and Sunnah? And the Quran and Sunnah is taught right here in the masjid. So you could not have find a better knowledge than this, what's taught right here, Quran and Sunnah. And what is Salih, a righteous child? If your child does not come to this masjid, how will he know that this hadith exists? And how will he know? I have one sister after I almost lost my breath. Zakallah khair The first sister, Allahu Akbar. May Allah bless you, inshallah. We have a sister for number seven. Takbir. So I'll be talking and you raise your hand, okay? Just let me. Um, Jazakallah. May Allah bless you, Allah. Barakallah. Thank you. So if your child doesn't come to the masjid, how could he be righteous? How could he know about this hadith that he will come back and do dua for you? So the scholar says, if you don't do that, when you die, your actions and deeds are cut off. But if you do this, oh, mashallah, no gold. Okay, good, good. We'll take it. Good. Real? Yeah, okay. I don't know. I'm not an expert. But Jazakumullah khairan. May Allah bless you, Allah. Now, think about it. Couldn't have been better three things in the same place right here. The best investment you can ever make. Do we have number eight? We have seven. We're looking for number eight. Let's just get at least ten. 
Can we do that, brother and sister? Allah is seeking khair, but Akhi. Takbir. Barakallah, big my brother. What's your name, man? Okay. Socks looking. Barakallah, big. Good. May Allah bless you, Akhi. All right, we have two more spots. Two more spots for $5,000. Who has that strength to fight shaitan? Seventy shaitan you have to fight. Your ukhti. Seventy shaitan, Akhi, can you not beat him? I want you to think that this is a war between you and shaitan. Wallahi, that's what it is. You have to think about it. I'm fighting shaitan, and inshallah I will win. We're looking for two more people. Two more. Do we have two more people for $5,000? A brother or a sister, even a family? Allah is zikr khair ukhti. Barakallah fiqh wa malik. Takbir. We have one sister, alhamdulillah. Sisters are waking up, man. Be careful, dude, because they come back and they come back strong and they make you look bad. Okay, I don't want to sound like Brother Bona, but he always he say, okay. Oh, Jazakallah khairan. May Allah barakallah fiqh wa ahlika malik. MashaAllah. Jazakallah khair ya ukhti. Wallahi, may Allah reward you much better gold in Jannah, inshaAllah. That's what this spirit is all about. Barakallah fiqh ya ukhti. We have one more spot for $5,000. One more spot left. Who will be that lucky person? A brother or a sister or a family that will take the last spot for $5,000. Who would that be? Suspense is killing you. One more spot. Remember the story of Abdullah ibn Umar. It's a known story, but I repeat it just to remind this poor slave of Allah, Allah because it says the heart rusts. We need to be reminded. Abdullah ibn Umar loved fish. So his wife brought him fish. It was very difficult to get him fish in that area. So a man, a wayfarer comes in, knocks on the door. Wayfarer, help me. So um, Abdullah ibn Umar says, give him the fish. So his wife said, but I've gotten a really difficult time in order for me to do fish for you. I know you love fish. Give him something else. He says, no, no, no. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لَن تَنَالُ الْبِرُ حَتَّى تُنْفِقُوا مِمَّا تُحِبُّونَ you will not reach the benevolence area, the exceeding of doing righteous deeds. Till you spend from what you like, and what you like, money is certainly there. This is al-mal wal-banun, zinat al-hayat dunya It is the decoration of life, money, and believe it or not, the scholar says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put money before children. Do you believe it? Yes. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, al-mal wal-banun, wealth and children are the decoration of this life. So he says, I will want to give what I love because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told me to give what I love because I want to be benevolent. So she runs after him after she gives him the fish. She says, please, we need the fish back for my husband. Here, I'll buy, I'll buy it back for me. So she gives him money, she gets the fish, puts it back in front of him. Allah is the khair, ukhti. Barakallahu feek, insha'Allah. Masha'Allah, beautiful ring. Jazakallah khair. May Allah bless you, Allah. And she runs after, gets the fish, puts it back on Umar, Abdullah ibn Umar's uh, table. Then the man comes back, knocks on the door one more time, says, wait there, help me. <laughs> so Abdullah ibn Umar said, what? Give him the fish again. We already gave him the fish. Just give him again. Why? Because Allah said, well, I'm fiqhu. I'm going. If you spend once, you spend again. He didn't say, well, I'm fiqhu. Once, I'm fiqhu. One time. No, no, I'm going. Continuous. So she gives him back. She runs again after him, says, here, I'll buy it back from you. So he gives the money, puts it back, third time. He says, billah, I asked for the second, don't come back. <laughs> Here's the money, just don't come back, let him enjoy the fish. Can you imagine, do we have that last spot for $5,000? $5,000, brothers and sisters. We need that one. We need that one, brothers and sisters. Allah is seeking khair, ya fi. Barakallahu fi, ahli kamalik. Thank you, brother. What's your name, Afi? Amin? Barak. Amir? Barakallah fiqh ya May Allah bless you, your family, your wealth, and your health for everyone that donated so far. Alhamdulillah. Jazakallah khair ya My wife inshallah is going to be, but she's not here. Of course Allah. Allah Allahu Akbar. The brother is saying his wife is going to donate. Allah is ziyan na khair. May Allah bless him inshallah. You and your wife and your family inshallah. Barakallah fiqh wa ahli kamalik. Very good. Very good indeed. May Allah bless you for that. I know we're short a bit, but let's work on the second, second hundred thousand. In a different mode. You gotta get on this wagon. Brothers, if we wanna make this dream come to reality, you need to dig deep. Wallahi, you gotta dig deep. We're looking for 2,500. 2,500. Allah is seeking khair. We have one. Barakallah fiqh, ya khair. Allah is seeking khair, my brother, over there. MashaAllah. That's number two. Barakallah fiqh. Let me count them down. Here we go, brothers. And sisters, 250. Make that. 
25,000. Uh, what time is it? 2,500. <laughs> I'm so confused. What do we got? Oh, mashallah. 70? 70,000. Allahu Akbar. Very good. Gold. Okay. Mashallah. What? Every time I turn around, it just pops gold. I have no idea. It's like magic shit. It's not magic mushroom. It's ma magic, uh, magic gold. And if you're laughing, I need to talk to you, man. <laughs> he knows what magic mushroom is. How do I know what it is? Been there, done that. Come on, dude. All right. We're looking for $2,500. We already got two. Let's count them up to 20. Allah is taking care of you. Number three. Very good. Who will take us up to number four? Brothers and sisters. $2,500 only for the rest of the year. Allah is thinking, now I know where the source is coming from. Zakallah khair. MashaAllah, this stuff is coming back, inshaAllah. All right, we have, we have two. Who will take us number three? $2,500. Barakallah, take a look at the young. Hey, Brother Rehan, how are you, man? Right here, brother. I love you, man. Very good, number three. Who can take us number four? It's less than $200, $200 or less. Come on, brothers and sisters, come on, you can do it. You can do it, Allah. Who can help us out with 2500? 2500, you have it? Barakallah fiqh, akhi. Barakallah fiqh. Number four, Allah is seek anna khayra. May Allah bless you, inshallah. Who will be the lucky number five? Sisters, here we go. I know you got the gold going now. May Allah bless you, inshallah. $2500, but we need the cash, inshallah. We need the cash. Dig deep. Think about it. Look at this place. It's yours. You're building home. Imagine, most of us are afraid, right? We're afraid to give. You know why? Al-waladu majbana. That's what the hadith says. Your child will make you scared. Much better. Because you want to give and you want to save and something for your children. But if you look back in the Quran, you'll find out that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, If you fear for your children, if you feel your offspring or your lineage, you have to have taqwa, fat, ta'qib, lam. Lamb goes into fi'l mudara. You know what that means? A talab al amr. If that lamb, if the letter lamb goes into fi'l mudara, this present ongoing tense, that means Allah is requesting and giving you a command. Fayyatakullah. And what is the taqwa? Coming from the spending, inshallah. It comes in coincidence, inshallah. Who will give us? Oh, that's a nice ring, man. Zakalaka, beautiful. Zakalaka, what's your name, man? Ryan? Are you married? Come, come, come. come. Zakallah, put it on the floor, inshallah. Zakallah. Allah, may Allah bless you, Allah. Alhamdulillah, nice collection indeed. Nice collection. I hope you have some cash, man. Because you're going to buy this back for your, for your wife, otherwise you toast. And she knows who you are. You're going back home. <laughs> Allah is the here. Beautiful, mashallah, mashallah. Very good indeed. Okay, so we're up to five, right? Some more, oh, mashallah. <laughs> Is there a jeweler here? I can make a deal. I need to talk to you. If you have a jewel shop. Okay. MashaAllah. Very good. We'll leave that till the end. We'll leave that till the end. Now we got five. We got five. Alhamdulillah. Who can be number six? $2,500. $2,500. Who can do that? Jazakallah khair ya ufti. Barakallah fiku ala kumayn. May Allah bless you inshallah. I'm not going to ask. Barakallah fiku. May Allah bless you ufti. Do we have number seven? Number seven, $2,500. We can do it. Jazakallah khair my brother. Barakallah fiku ala kumayn. What's your name, Mahi? Yeah, barakallah fiqh, yeah, fiqh. May Allah bless you, inshallah. We have number eight. We're almost there. We're almost there. Come on, dig deep. Think about it. $2,500, I can get a castle in heaven. Amazing. How much would you pay? How much would you pay to be next to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? How much would you pay to have a home that is built of one brick of silver, one brick of gold? What's holding it together is a beautiful mosque, aroma. How much would you pay Ukhti not to ever do aerobics again? And eat as much chocolate as you want. And this guy right here would look really good for you. And he will get you flowers and chocolate and poetry. Your dream guy in Jannah. How much would you pay for him to buy you something new? Or say, that word that we can't say to you. He will say that to you in Jannah. How much would you pay for it? Only $25 on sale. Amazing price. You can't get it anywhere. $2,500, do we have it? We need two more. $2,500. Brothers, do we have it? Sorry, do I get to give I'm sorry, man, it's not. The brother's gonna get kill me after this. We need two more, brothers and sisters. Here we go, $2,500. $2,500. How could you go on with that? We need two more. Inshallah, we'll get it. Inshallah, we'll get it. I remind you of the story of Talha. 
He had a beautiful palm garden. You get it? Barakallah fi kafi. Barakallah, what's your name, Abi? Huh? Danny, Ghani? Ghani? Barakallah khair, Barakallah Ghani. We need one more. One more, brother. Allah is sake of khair. The family? Group of friends? Whatever it takes, man. The best group of friends. But like, look at this. All youth. They're all youth. Okay, so who's going to get married first? They're all pointing at Allah. Like, yeah, good for you, man. MashaAllah. Allah, Allah. But that's why he's smiling, dude. MashaAllah. Very good. May Allah bless you all. I love to see that you've given, Wallahi. That is awesome. And one thing, brothers and sisters, if you have children, Zakallah, please sit down. Barakallah, thank you. If you have children, give your children the money to give, to teach them how to start giving sadaqah. That's actually hands on. Perfect. We have the last one. Okay, now I need 10 more. <laughs> I know we said we need one more. But can we dig for another 10? Can we dig for another 10? We can. Inshallah, we can. Brothers and sisters, you're actually witnessing history. I want to tell you why. I will take you back in history to Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu You know what he used to do? Forgive it, it's okay, Shaykh, if I take it. Excuse me one sec. Now, we're, we're going to be, uh, we're not fighting anything, wallahi. But you know what? Let me take you back to the history after a clip. Maybe the clip of Shaykh Riyad would be a good time to take a break and, and hear Shaykh Riyad Razazi as if he's with us now. Inshallah, then I'll take it from there. Only three to four minutes a clip, then I'll... Okay? It's not ready? No, not already. Okay. If you, it's not ready? Okay. Ten minutes to pray? Oh, ten minutes to Maghrib. Now we gotta dig. We gotta dig hard. Think about it. Umar Khattab. Umar Khattab, please, think about it, guys. You know what he used to do if he opened a new uh, city? He would actually stand somewhere and take an arrow and throw it in every direction, right around. He would take an arrow and use his archery to just throw the arrows all the way around. Why was he doing this? I don't have candy, so if you answer the question, I, I can only give you an extra word, thank you. Why were he doing that? Why was Umar not doing that? Anybody knows? I know you know even a few of my... Uh, <laughs> you know what he was doing? He was actually putting the boundaries of the city. He's actually saying this is the city where the arrows fall. But where was he standing? Anybody knows? Where was Umar Khattab standing? He was standing where the masjid is going to be built. Did you hear this, Akhi Anukhti? Umar Khattab put the arrows right around to put the boundaries in the city and he was standing where that future masjid was going to build. You know what that means? That means that this masjid was the center of the city. As if the heart is in the center of your, of your body. The whole thing revolved about the center of the body and the center was just your heart. That's the link. Everything was around there. Okay, how about just 10 of $2,000? Just give me 10 of $2,000 each. Who can have $2,000 each? Allah is sick of here. One and two. That is a beautiful. That's the, I tell you, Allah, Allah is sick of here. Barakallah fiqh, my brother. Number three, Allah is sick of here. Barakallah fiqh. Wallahi, give when you know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to give you back. No, no uncertainty. It's mentioned in the Quran. It's mentioned in the Sunnah. Only the weak of the iman that will tell you back. Only shaitan is whispering to you, don't give. You need it. If you hold it, you'll get more. On the contrary, wallahi. You will get it from a place that you never thought of. We have three already. We're looking for seven more for 2000. We have number four, Barakallah Fiki. MashaAllah. MashaAllah. That's awesome. We have four. We're looking for six more. Who can count us down? Count us down, brothers and sisters. Here we go. Just $2,000 for the whole year. You can give us payments. Who can help us out? Help yourself. Let me correct that. Barakallah fiqi, akhi. Number six. Now we need five more. May Allah bless you, Shay. Are you still playing soccer? Good for you, MYSL. You go, man. Five spots. $2,000 for the whole year. How could you get better than this? Who can help us out? Just five spots. $2,000 each. Count us down. One, Barakallah Fiq, Ya Akhi. We have four more spots. May Allah bless you, Shaykh. Wallahi. Jazakallah Anna Khaira. We have four more. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. I love that guy. How old is your son, man? Two and a half years. 
I'm not, how old are you up to? Where's that guy? Where's the sister? With the, no, the, the, the sister. I'm looking for a bride for this guy because he's good. MashaAllah. He's two and a half years old. But he can do it. Don't worry. Jazakallah khairi akhi. We have three more or two, four more. What is it? <laughs> Alright, we'll go for four. It's three. You know, Ibn Al Aqal. Okay, then we go for three. We have four more spots. Four more spots, brothers and sisters. Four more spots for $2,000 for the whole year. Who can help yourself? You know what? Allah is seeking khairi akhi. May Allah bless you, inshallah. One of the volunteers of Baghdad sisters in the back, inshallah. Thank you, sister. Barakallah fiki. We need three more spots. $2,000. $2,000, brothers and sisters. The last three on this plateau. Who can help? Yourself. Help yourself. You know why? Because the scholars will say you are afraid of your children, or afraid of anything else of the future, because you want the RRSP. Is that right? Sounds familiar, right? Because you want to make sure that you don't stay broke or so on. But there's something called ERRSP. It's called the Eternal Registered Retirement Plan. This goes into your bank with Allah. No better investment. Three more. Three more brothers and sisters. It will assure you in this life and in your after. Three more for $2,000 each. We don't have enough time. Enough the prayer is coming. Help us out brothers and sisters. Dig deep Allah. Okay. I want to remember, remind you of a story. This story comes from again the seerah. When Prophet Muhammad وسلم, told his wives that uh, the first one of you will come with me is the longest of you arms. So the wives started to measure their arms. Oh, I've got the longest arm. But it wasn't. It was Sauda radiallahu You know what he meant? She said that she used to spend lots of sadaqah. Lots of sadaqah. So who wants to be resurrected with Ummahajim um Mu'mineen? Two thousand dollars, we're looking for three. Brothers and sisters. Allah is zikil khairi akhi. You'll take it, barakallah fiqa. I need two more. May Allah bless you, Allah. You'll take the three. Allahu Akbar. Allah, may Allah. Takbir. He will take the three. Allah is zikr anna khayra. I could come and hug you, but you know, I need to. I have a job. <laughs> All right, here we go. We're looking for another 10, but this time it's 1250. We're breaking it down in half. 1250. Just about 100 bucks a month. 1250. Who can help us with 1250? First one, Barakallah Fiki Akhti. May Allah bless you with that, inshallah. Right here. Who can think it's number two? Barakallah Fiki Akhti. May Allah bless you. Another brother, number three. Barakallah Fiki. Number four is right there. Number five. Allahu Akbar. We're looking for another five. Jazakallah Khairi Akhti. Now we get four more. Four more. Four more brothers. Allah is Zikhanna Khaira. Another brother right here. Even though he gave again, he will give again. Barakallah Fiki. We have three more. Thank you, Akhti. Jazakallah Khaira. Okay, we need two more. Two more brothers and sisters. Only 1250. How could we go wrong with that? Allah is Zikhanna Khairi Akhti. Barakallah Fiki. Okay, and I got number 10. Barakallah nine and 10. Another one over there. So let's have another 10. And I have already one. Barakallah Fiki. I have nine left for twelve fifty. Just about hundred bucks. You can do it, Ukhti. You can do it, Akhi. Here we go. We're almost there. We're running out of time. We don't have enough time. Now the birds are coming. Who can help us out? Help yourself, Allah. Barakallah Fiki, Akhi. Look at the youth coming forward. Barakallah Fiki, man. All right. I got, oh, look at the young coming down. My man. Very good, Allah. We have seven spots left. Seven spots left for twelve fifty. Last call. Brothers and sisters, Allah is taking care. Number six, Barakallah Fiki. Six left. Brothers and sisters, MashaAllah, Zakallah Khairan. This will have to wait after the Salat, right? MashaAllah. Okay, five more spots for 12.50. Brothers and sisters, you can't get better than that. Place in Jannah. Place with Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And I want to tell you that even some of the scholars will tell you, from your left hand side in the grave, when those angels that Brother Bona was talking about, you know the comments they pour the punishment on? They will say, Ma qibali man madkhal. You can come through me. I am protected. What was it? He says, Sadaqa. Sadaqa will protect you in the grave. Sadaqa will protect you in the grave. Not only that, the hadith says that Sadaqa, Zakallah khairi akhti. We need two more. We need two more. Oh, yeah, we need two more, right? I'm confused. Allahu Akbar, Zakallah. We had one, Barakallah fiq. Last one. Who can give us the last one? Allah is sikhan na khaira. All right, 10 for 1,000. Give me 10 for 1,000 only. Barakallah fiqi akhti. There's one. Who can give me more? Allah is sikhan na khaira. There's two. Okay, maybe they're the same family. Okay, fine, fine. I understand. Zakallah fiqi. Allah bless you for your intention, inshallah. 
Who can give me 1,000? Barakallah fiqh, Eki. Fantastic. Number three, Barakallah fiqh, my brother. Who can give us number four? $1,000 each, that's it. For one whole year. You can do it, brothers and sisters. Dig deep and think about it. Think about Aisha radiallahu anha. Allah yasik anna khairi, Eki. Barakallah fiqh, five. We need five more for $1,000. Zakallah khairi, Eki is right there. Barakallah fiqh. Number four, who can give us just four? That's four. Four left. But Aisha radiallahu anha barakallah big my brother is right there. Zakallah khair three. Who can help us out? One, two, mashallah. One left, one left. One brother or one sister left for $1,000. Who can be that lucky person? Just one. One person, Allah is taking khairi up in the back. May Allah bless you, inshallah. Now remember, Aisha radiallahu anha, what did she used to do? She used to put the perfume in the money. When she, before she gives it away for sadaqah, you know what she's asked? Why do you do that? Do you understand what she said? She said that because it goes in the hand of Allah, before it goes into the hand of the person who is asking for it. Allahu Akbar. Ya Khudu Salaqat is the one that Allah that takes the Salaqat. You, you, you multiplies it for you. So I'm looking for five, for 10 people for $500. Just $500. That's very good. One, Barakallah Diki Akhti. Who got two and three, MashaAllah, four, Allahu Akbar, five, six, MashaAllah, seven. I'm not going to even bother with the brothers now. <laughs> I got seven right here. I'm looking for three more for $500. $500. Eight, nine, ten, another ten. That's one. You're breaking out. Very good. MashaAllah. Nine left. Nine left. $500, brothers and sisters. Just nine more. Here we go. Time for prayers is coming. Get on the wagon. Wallahi. Take advantage of it. Zakalah in the back. Right. Eight more spots left. $500 each. That's what we can do. Help us out. $500. You can do it. $500 is nothing. All right, here we go, brothers and sisters. Allah is a good of you. May Allah bless you, Allah. Seven spots left. Seven spots left of $500. Who can help us out? Let's take it home. Come on, brothers, dig deep. If you give and give again, you can do it. Here we go, seven spots. Who can count us down? Okay. I remember when a man says, if the man is being asked to give money, things that he needs, the man that is asking for, the money more than he needs him to ask him for money, he doesn't have the understanding. He says, Marhaban bima yaqudzadi lil akhira bi ghayri thaman. Where is this man that will take my ajra, my reward in the hereafter, carry it for me without having me give him ujra? Seven more spots, brothers and sisters, for $500. Who do we have? $500. Invest in yourself in the hereafter. Don't wait till the last minute. The types of money are types of how many? Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Ashadu an la ilaha illallah, Ashadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah, Hayal al-Salah, Hayal al-Falah, Qad qamat al-Salah, Qad qamat al-Salah, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illallah. And I know you thought you got rid of me, but so close yet so far, just when you thought it was safe. But we come back with goodies this time. We come back with goodies. I mean, you'll get something in this dunya and the hereafter, but inshallah, we'll give you something in return. It's just a bonus. Now, I heard a rumor that some of the brothers, I'm looking at you now, 
I want to get married. Some of the brothers, especially, are supposed to be first in line to get married. So I'm thinking it's possible that this is my target audience, that these guys want to buy some gold for the future missus. Anything funny in this land of milk and honey, it's all about money. You got to take some money, dude. You want the honey, you know what I mean? You got to give me money. Right, so if you were looking to get married, and if you are married, and this is your wife, <laughs> let's give this up. It's probably a real nice touch, brothers, if you want to give this up. So it's up for $2,000. You got one? I have I have two, two thousand dollars Who can give me $2,100? $2,100. The brother is so young, and you want to get married, don't you? I know, man. I feel your pain, dude. Oh, uh, mashallah, we're pouring gold here, man. Okay. So I have, it's a great cause. You still get the receipt. You'll get something back, and you get the reward. Who can give me 21? I have $2,000. You can give me 21. We won't hold. We only have 10, 10 minutes. I don't have much time. It'll go. It won't stay. I have 2,000. Who can give me 21? 2,000 going once. 2,000 going twice. Sold for 2,000. Allahu Akbar. May Allah bless you, Akhi. Here you go, my brother. $2,000 for this brother. Okay. Allah is the Wow, this one is a bit uh, decorative. All right, uh, no idea again. This one is a bit smaller, but it's more work. It's uh, for usually probably younger, younger audience. All right, who can start us up with five hundred dollars? Come on, five hundred dollars. It's a beautiful bracelet. I got five hundred dollars. Looking for six hundred dollars. I have six hundred dollars. I'm looking for seven. We give you seven for it. I have six. Do I have a seven? Do I have a seven for somebody else? I have six hundred dollars. I won't. I won't stay long. I'm looking for seven. Anything, man. Anything. I'll take anything. Any just. Okay. I've got eight going once. Eight going twice. Sold for eight. May Allah bless you, Allah. Mashallah. Are you opening a store, man? Or <laughs> if you're opening a store, I got some serious stuff for you too, man. All right. This one looks like a bit heavy too. A bit heavy too. All right. Let's start up with a thousand dollars. One thousand. One thousand dollars. Do I have one thousand dollars worth of biscuit of peace? If you want to get that back, okay, you can. Beautiful peace. Pretend that your husband bought it for you. Make yourself good, feel good. You know, I my love, my husband loves me. You look at that. And you can invite invite all your friends and say, look what my husband got me for me. Cute. No? I got one thousand dollars, a beautiful piece. It's fifty percent off. It's the same as a two thousand dollars. And I got some peas. We're selling a car. If you don't get these keys, we're selling your car. We're auctioning it right now. Apparently, it's a, it's a car. <laughs> it's a car that works. You turn the thing and with the four wheels, it moves. And it's an auto thingy. It's a, you'll take it? Kia. How much did you give the keys back? No, you don't get the keys back for free, man. House keys. You, how much do you pay for your house? 500,000 bucks at least. How much do you pay for the keys? Whose keys are they? Anybody's keys? You know, if you don't get the keys, we sell them. You know that, right? This is an auction, dude. Whose keys are they? Anybody's? Nobody, everybody now goes, no, it's not my keys. I'm just owning the car. I don't want it. <laughs> I can claim it. I can get a better car. <laughs> it was stolen. Oh, turn the alarm. Tell, I will turn the alarm. You know we know you are. We know you live. You can run, but you can't hide, man. <laughs> All right, no problem. If you want to give something great, if you don't want to give it, no problem. But this is... Okay, you know, apparently he's gone. We'll go back to this guy. $1,000 for a beautiful piece of gold. Who can start us up? $1,000. I have it, mashallah. I'm looking for $1,100 now. $1,100 for this beautiful piece. It's worth more than that, I know that. Inshallah, the sister says about $2,000. So I get $1,000, I'm looking for $1,100. $1,100, I have $1,100. I'm looking for $1,200. When you take it out for $1,200, it's also worth it. I have $1,200, I'm looking for $300. $1,300, I'm looking for $13. When you take it for $13, I got $1,200. I won't stay for long. <laughs> I got 1200 going once, 1200 going twice. I have 13, so close yet so far. Man, I can taste it. I have 1300 now, I'm looking for 14. 14, I have 14. I have no idea what I'm talking about, but it sounds good. 1500, I have 14 and going. 15, 14 going once, 14 going twice. So, 1400. MashaAllah, the brother is loaded with gold now. Sisters, you better get to know this guy. He's bought everything so far in the gold. One lucky girl is going home tonight, mashallah. Look at this beautiful piece too. Wow, man. All right. Let's start this off with $1,000 again. No, $2,000. $2,000. $2,000. That's sick. $2,000. $2,000. $2,000. $2,000. $2,000. $2,000. $2,000. $2,000. $2,000. $2,000. $2,000. $2,000. $2,000. $2,000. $2,000. $2,000. $2,000. $2,000. $2,000. $2
$1,000. Uh, really a great deal. All right. You get something in this video and hereafter. $1,000. Who can give us $1,000? I'm looking for my friend. Are you all, oh, are you taking me on? Just, I'll take you on, boy. All right. Okay. $1,000. Looking for $1,100. $1,100. I have $1,100. I'm looking for $1,200. $1,200. Will you take it off $1,200? $13? $13? Will you take it $13? I have $13. I'm looking for $14. $14. Fourteen is got it now. Fifteen, fifteen, fifteen. I have to fifteen. If I have to fifteen, will you take fifteen? Will you take fifteen? Will you take fifteen? Yeah, I have fifteen. I'm looking for seventeen. 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 I have seventeen. Eighteen. 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 So for 19 on them. May Allah bless it for you. It's a beautiful piece, Abhi. MashaAllah. Beautiful piece. Congratulations. Very good. MashaAllah. All right. Okay, I think they go into pairs. I need some help with the sisters to help me out on this one. I have no idea what goes with where. Sisters? <laughs> if there is a pair or something. I think this one is what? This one? Right? Yeah? Singles? Okay. Very good. Is that collected? I have two pair of pingles, pingles, bingles, whatever you call it, Thank you know, those bangles. <laughs> yeah, I really use this a lot. Two pair of these things. I'm looking for $500, $500. Sisters, you know they're worth it. You're worth it. Have you heard that commercial before? No, okay. $500, brothers, $500 for two of these pieces. Five, I have one, I have one. I'm looking for $600 now, $600. Time is running out. We're not keeping anything back. I got $500, I'm looking for $600, $600, $500 going what? I have $600, I'm looking for seven, will you give me seven? I have $600, I'm looking for seven, will you give me seven? He's looking at you and he hates you now. You know, he hates, I know, but we love each other for the sake of Allah, of course. He hates you in a good way, ripta, ripta. <laughs> Not Hassan. I got $600, looking for seven. $600 going once, $600 twice, sold for $600, beautiful pieces. May Allah bless you for that brother, inshallah, $600, right there, the other brother right there. That's right there. Okay, now this looks like a, you know, a thing. It's got stuff and different colors and shades and, you know. $500, $500 a beautiful piece, $500. I have $500, I'm looking for $600. $600, will you give me $600 for it? A beautiful piece for a good cause, you'll get the receipt. Do I have $600? All right, I'm looking for $500, it's going, it's going. $500 for once. $500 going twice, sold for $500, mashallah, Mubarak, my man, my man, we need to talk, man, <laughs> we need to talk, very good, I'll tell you what, I got three, I don't have enough time, I got three right here, give me a thousand bucks for the three, thousand dollars for the three, I have a thousand dollars for the three, I'm looking for eleven hundred dollars for the three, eleven hundred dollars, who can give me eleven hundred dollars for three bangles, now at least I know how to pronounce them, bangles, three hundred, I got 1,000 for, sorry, who's that? The brothers, 1,000 for the three. You can give me 1,100. 1,100 for, I have 1,100. I'm looking for 1,200. I'm looking for 1,200. I get 1,100. I'm looking for 12. 1,100 going once. 1,100 going twice. 1,100 dollars for three. Good for you, man. You, let's make a deal. The guy's name is Monkey Hall. MashaAllah. Now, you know what? I don't have enough time to go through this stuff. <laughs> but I'll tell you what. I have, who can make us a deal? I got one, two, three, four, five, mashallah, six, seven, eight, eight, uh, what do you call these rings? Eight rings. I'm not talking onion rings, I'm talking gold rings, dude. I'm not talking ring around the collar, I'm talking the real thing. Eight rings right here. Who can start me up with uh, 5,000? What? How much? How much? 1,000? Okay. Who can up, up, up that guy? 1,100. 1,100. 1,200. I'm looking for 1,200. 1,200. I'm looking for 1,300. 1,300. 1,300 for eight rings. Eight rings. Eight. I'm looking for, I got the 1,300. I'm looking for 1,400. 1,400. I'm looking for 1,500 now. $1,500 now for eight rings, man. You got eight wives, four wives. I mean, no wives. One wife. <laughs> Taxi? I got to go. The sisters hate me. Already I'm in trouble. 15? Allah Akbar, 15, I'll keep it. Who can up that? No, I, you can have it, but he can keep it. I mean, now it's 16, I'm looking for $1,600. May Allah bless you, Allah, for the intention. $1,600 for eight rings, that's $200 a ring. Are you kidding? Who can give me that? $1,600. Who can $1,600 for eight rings? 
$2,000, my man. I love you, you know that, right? You're right here, my man. Okay. $2,100, I got $2,000, I'm looking for $21. Who can give me $21 for the eight rings? $2,000, who can give me $21? $2,000 going once? $2,000 going twice? So for $2,000, Barakallah fi kiyashi. May Allah bless you, Allah. Last item on the, on the thingy, it's a pair of earrings. They look beautiful. If you want to see them, by all means, feel free. Now, who can start us off with 500 bucks? Two pairs of, e a, a pair of earrings. Beautiful piece. $500 for a good cause. You'll make your wife happy. Happy wife, happy life. $500 I have. $600 I'm looking for. $600. Sisters, anybody interested? Okay, I work with the brothers. I have $500 I'm looking for $600. $600. Go on. $600 I have. $700. I'm looking for $700. $700. $600 going. $600 going once. Six hundred going twice. Sold for six hundred dollars. May Allah bless you, Allah. Masha Allah, wa Taala billah. May Allah bless you for all your time and effort. I leave you with one thought: If you could not get on the on the wagon of giving money, I have a golden opportunity. Something that you will never be able to regret. You will never look back and say, "Man, I shouldn't have done that." Something that will stay with you in this life and the hereafter. Something that will come with you in the grave and will build that castle for you in heaven. What is it? It's a monthly donation. You will get the receipt for it, and I'm going. The forms are there, whatever you can give. You want to give $100 a month, by all means. 70, 80, 60, 75, 50, even $10 a month. Give it. But whatever it is you do, don't leave this place without doing something. Why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, antum Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us in this story, in this verse, he says that here you are being told to give for the sake of Allah. Amongst us will hoard, will hold back. Miser. He says among those who do it, will do it against themselves. And Allah reminds you that he is the rich one and we are poor to him. So whatever you do, Akhi and even if you give one dollar a month, whatever it is that you can, don't leave here without doing something, inshallah. May Allah bless you all. Barakallah feekum. Inshallah. 163,000. Wallahi, you should be proud of yourself. It's a beautiful community, and you look for a future. Well, when I came here, the brother says 100,000. And then the other brother says, no, 250. But certainly we did good. May Allah bless you. You should be proud of yourself. May Allah barak Allah feekum wa ahlakum wa alikum. Jazakumullah khair for your, all your help. We'll see you, inshallah, next time when this place is the best in town, inshallah. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa Jazakallah khair, uh, Sheikh Ala, for the fundraising. It's, it takes a lot of work to do fundraising. He's sweating, he's tired, but uh, we thank him and inshallah may Allah reward him. Uh, there's still a couple of minutes before food, so we're going to ask uh, Brother Buna Muhammad to come back uh, and Sheikh Uthman. Uh, they prepare something for us. It'll take probably 10 minutes, no more than 10 minutes, so they'll take us through their skit and then food should be ready by then and then uh, as soon as they're complete everybody can proceed towards the food area أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم ما يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا
يسوس في صدور الناس من الجنة والناس السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته سبحان الله I thought that this was effective See, nobody responded Jazakallah uh, khair for everybody returning back to your speech uh, So basically Sheik Osman, mashallah, is a very good friend of mine, okay? And we always had this idea, right? Like we wanted to do something together. We always thought, you know, what can I possibly do with you, mashallah? He has the whole Quran in his head. I have a couple lines of poetry, <laughs> honestly. And we said, let's try and create something which will, you know, bring life to the Quran and explain it and provide it in a context for people nowadays for us, many of us, we don't even speak Arabic. For some of us, we don't even understand what we're citing. So we try to create this, you know, this, 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 this method of presenting the Quran in an easy to understand format. We created this show. It's a show that, inshallah, we're going to take on the road and we're going to travel with. It's called When the World Changed. And when the world changed was the time when the Quran was revealed. So... Right now, we just backstage, we just said, you know what, let's just do something fun. The, the organizers told me they wanted me to, you know, uh, do something for about five or ten minutes. So I said, mashallah, you're the sheikh here. There's no way I'm going to let him walk away without doing anything as well. So we just put together this little thing very quickly, okay? Well, I hope it makes sense. I hope it's good, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to recite some lines of poetry, and the sheikh is going to respond with some corresponding uh, ayat of the Quran. And uh, hopefully, inshallah, we didn't even practice it. So, <laughs> who knows? Who knows what's going to go down, inshallah. So this is a poem that I wrote, and I, I, I cut it up into some pieces, and then the Sheikh is going to respond with some Quran. This piece is called, How to Be a Slave. I know there's a lot of actual people walking around and stuff like that in the back, but can you just point to your neighbor if somebody's talking, just tell them to quiet down for one second, because we need to concentrate. Everyone just, everybody do this. Back in the day, they say that I came from slaves, as though being a slave is something that would make me ashamed. To say, Home, you would actually be amazed to know that we are all slaves, but in what kind of way? I mean, some people submit to cigarettes, smoking five times a day. And some people worship money, only to see it go away. A couple people put their faith in whatever the weatherman say, and some people even pray to the sun. But I wonder who created the sun anyway. <laughs> والشمس وضحاها والقمر إذا تلاها والنهار إذا جلاها والليل إذا يغشاها والسماء وما بناها والأرض وما طحاها ونفس وما زكاها فألهمها فجورها some people may tell you that life has no purpose, but some people are like pennies, two-faced and almost worthless. It's like a gift and a curse that hurts even in between, but even through curses you can find gifts of hidden mercy from the only one worthy of our serving and fear, doing any and everything just for 
for the chance to come near. So those slaves are always working, doing the same routines over and over again. You would think they were machines fueled by a gasoline that you wished you could see. But it's a long road to a sirat al-mustaqeem. اهدنا الصراط المستقيم اهدنا الصراط المستقيم اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين صراط الذين صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين but becoming a slave is the only way that you will ever become free. This world is a prison house and I'm just serving my time like a G, locked up in solitaire. What can my enemies do to me when paradise is in the heart and servitude is all that I seek? From a place where materialism has become a new religion, where we always want more before we remember what we were given, where your children are not safe from the lies on TV, where role models pop bottles and pose new for magazines. Welcome to the dunya, where things are not always what they seem, and your reality is more just like a really long dream, more like a traveler stopping for shade under a tree, more like a commercial break, and you already forgot what you were watching, silly rabbit. Every soul shall have its taste of death, and to Allah, you will be brought right back. كل نفس ذائقة الموت وإنما توفون أجوركم يوم القيامة فمن زحزح عن النار وأدخل الجنة فقد فاز وما الحياة الدنيا إلا متاع الغرور How man gets and forgets while he gives and forgives. Yes, everyone will die, but not everyone truly lives on their hands and knees to the skies begging, please do what is worthy of thee and not what is worthy of me. Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, Malik Yawm Al-Deen. If not for his blessings, then we would have nothing. So I feel no ways calling myself his slave. No matter what they say, to him alone I pray. Qul huwa Allah ahad, Allah al-Samad. Lam yalid wa lam yulad, wa lam yakul lahu kufuan ahad. The greatest creator, a counter and judge, the most holy king who sees all from above, the wisest protector, majestic avenger, the light and the guide, forgiving and kind, the giver of honor, blessings and peace, the first and the last, the truth ever living, what kind of fool would not want to give him all of their love why be a slave to this world when you could be Abdullah ya Allah Wallahu alladhi la ilaha illa hu alimu alghayb wa shahada huwa arrahman arrahim Wallahu alladhi la القدوس السلام المؤمن المهيمن العزيز الجبار المتكبر سبحان الله عما يشركون هو الله الخالق البارئ المصور له الأسماء الحسنى 
يسبح له ما في السماوات والأرض وهو العزيز الحكيم. Yes, I am a slave, but no, I'm not alone. There are billions of us. You should join our happy home and bear witness to the one true throne. Strip your ego down, leave your arrogance at the door, and surrender yourselves to the one true king. May we all remain slaves until we return back to him. Subhanallah, alhamdu, subhanallah, alhamdu, alhamdulillah, rabbil alamin. Jazakallah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Actually, can I just make one more, uh, just one note that I am selling the CD right in the front entrance exit area. So on your way out or on your way in, inshallah, if you'd like to pick up a copy, you can do so then. Jazakallah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Jazakallah khair. Um, for the food, brothers, please uh, go back in an orderly fashion. Uh, there's only one way to get to the food if we all crowd around and try to butter ways in. Nobody's going to get food, so inshallah, please cooperate with each other. Uh, if anybody's worried about Isha, we are, uh, we've uh, delayed Isha from 9.15 to 9.45 to allow about an hour for everybody to be able to comfortably eat and not have any trouble. Uh, for, we've got water bottles for everybody, so please take one. Make sure you finish your water bottle before you go back and get a second one. Uh, if there's anything that you need from the committee for ICCM, any questions, any concerns, or any suggestions, we've got a suggestion box at the back where you can fill it out, or you can come to any one of us and uh, let us know what you think. Uh, but that's all from the stage, so inshallah we'll be, we'll be praying Isha at 9.45. Hopefully everybody can get their food in an orderly fashion, and inshallah pray Isha with us at 9.45. Jazakallah khair, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.